morning and thank you for the opportunity to be here. Just to add a little bit more about myself uh, for a way of background, I did start at the county about 10 years ago. I started as an analyst and then uh, moved up into the budget director role right about the time everything took a dive. So maybe it's my fault for all of these uh, economic woes we've been, been enduring. I've served as the assistant county administrator for the last two and a half years and then, as Ermina noted, just took over for Jim Grant on October 2nd upon his retirement. Prior to the county, I worked in the private sector in the automotive and technology industries, and uh, maybe I was a little ahead of my time because I got my midlife crisis out of the way early in my, in my late 20s, and uh, really searched for what it is I wanted to do and decided to make a career change into public service. And it's been a really good move. I really enjoy this line of work and find it both very challenging and rewarding. That being said, I may be uh, a sign of what's occurring at the county as an organization. As many of you may have heard, we have a lot of change occurring. Warren Jensen, our top attorney, retired and is being replaced by Rita Neal just a few weeks ago. Our elected auditor controller, Jerry Seabach, uh, who's been in that position for over 20 years, is retiring in December. And most recently, Frank Freitas, the elected treasurer tax collector for over 35 years, is retiring. And so a lot of change at the top of the organization, but it's not, not limited to that uh, portion of the organization. A recent analysis we did indicates that roughly half of our employees will be eligible to retire, and we have 2,400 employees. So half will be eligible to retire within the next five years. So that'll be a big focus for us. I view it as both a, a challenge and an opportunity. Obviously, when we lose folks who have 20 plus years of experience, we need to try to capture their their information, their knowledge uh, as, as best as we can to help train the new folks coming in behind them so that we don't reinvent the wheel and start from scratch each time and take a step back. I also view it as a great opportunity. Usually when folks come in, they bring some new ideas and perspectives and some fresh energy to help move the organization forward. So that's one of the things we'll be focusing on here in the coming months and years. You know, I've been asked a, a lot about um, what my plans are for the county, and I think before I do that, it's answer that question, it's important for me to, to outline what my role is at the county. And I, I really view my position as having three key components. The first is that uh, I help advise, interpret, and implement the goals and policies of the Board of Supervisors, which I'll come back to in just a moment. I also am responsible for overseeing the operations and finances of the entire county organization. And lastly, I serve as the emergency services director for this county. So in the instance that there were a large-scale natural or man-made disaster, I would be responsible for helping coordinate the effort amongst literally hundreds of agencies. Now, let's hope we don't have to do that anytime soon, obviously. So coming back to uh, the role in terms of advising, interpreting, and implementing the goals of policies, essentially it's my job to carry out what the board would like to have done. The way I view that is, is the board is elected to carry out the will of the people, and as staff, it's our role to carry out the will of the board. And the board's made it very clear what they would like for this community. They want, their vision is for a safe, healthy, livable, prosperous, and well-governed community. And I think all of us here can take a lot of pride in the fact that we do have a very safe, healthy, livable, prosperous, and well-governed community, and that's certainly not the result of any one organization, it's the result of everybody here, anybody who volunteers their time or makes an effort to improve this community, the, the cities, the state, and federal agencies have all contributed to that. So more specifically, what do I view as my role in helping further that? I view my role as really focusing on the well-governed component. To the extent that we can deliver programs and services that uh, meet the needs and wants of this community, and do that in an effective and efficient manner, then I think we can help further the board's vision of being even safer, healthier, more livable, and more prosperous. And that's really what uh, I'm really focusing on. And I see customer service as being a key component to that. You know, having worked in both the private and public sector, one of the commonalities that I see is that the customer is always first, um, regardless of. Um, what that person might be. Now obviously, you know, somebody at the jail might have a little different standard of customer service than uh, what all of you might receive when you come in for a, a permit of some sort. Um, and that's the goal. You know, what I wanted to, to wrap up on a, a little bit is, you know, many of you know the history of what's in, uh, occurred at, at the administrative office here. And, you know, three and a half, four years ago, we were in a really tough place. We had a rather big scandal in my office and we were facing 
the biggest budget gap that this county had seen since the Great Depression. Fast forward to today, the budget gap is nearly closed, and I think we're in pretty sound footing with respect to having recovered from that scandal. When I compare the condition of our county to others around the state, we're in pretty good shape. And so what I view going forward is we were in a really tough place, and we've moved into a relatively good place, and building off of uh, Michael's statements this morning, I'd help, like to help drive the organization from being in a good place to a great place. So thank you for this opportunity. Thank you.